looked in their sight, and then he said in that part of that verse 33, and so we were in their sight. Hey, how do you know that you were grasshoppers in their sight? I thought you were spies. They were spies that went into the land as spies. They didn't go to discuss with the people. They didn't listen to the people. They didn't know what the people were thinking about them. And they said, in their sight, we were like this. My friend, that's exaggeration. It's like, I cannot go to my place of work today. There is a lion in the way, and the lion will kill me. That's exaggeration. My boss is, you know, is such a tyrant. He's going to fire everybody. That's exaggeration. If he fires everybody, who is going to get the work done? The recession, we don't have anything to eat. That's exaggeration. How are people moving on the street if they have nothing to eat? We exaggerate too much. And then we're trying to fight this kind of fear, which is just fantasized exaggeration above reality. Look at verse 14. And all the congregation lifted their voice and cried, Hey, why are you crying? Because of what they said. How do you know what they said is right? They didn't bring back any picture. There was no mobile phone and there was no camera to bring back pictures and actually compare. How do you act on the information somebody has given you and then you begin to cry? You know what people do to us, the things they tell us? And they say, we are like grasshoppers. And if these great men, representatives of each of the tribes, if they went to the land and then they looked like grasshoppers and all the people, the giants, they also looked at them as grasshoppers. Why didn't they kill them before they came back? Why were they still alive? And by the way, they even cut the pomegranates and the fruit, and they carried on their shoulders. How did they give you a chance to cut all that down? Don't you reason? And then the people began to cry. And now they said, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel, how many of them? I said, how many of them? Do you see how wrong information can just set us on edge? Make us afraid unnecessarily and then make us to follow another direction and just destroy our lives and destroy our destiny and then he says all those children he said they murmured against Aaron and against Moses what's Moses fault and what's Aaron's fault do you see how we fight the wrong people because we're afraid and then we criticize the wrong people because we're afraid and then it says now would God that we had what? Again? But we don't need to die. Even if you are afraid. Oh, you should have said, would God will stay in this place where we are? And we don't go to the place. After all, the tribe of Reuben and Manasseh and God, they stayed on this other side. So, if you are afraid, you don't need to die. You can stay where you are and not go to where the giants are. Do you see, when people are afraid, they lose their reasoning faculty. They lose what we call common sense. And common sense becomes uncommon. And they cannot reason that this is what to do. That's the reason why when any fear strikes your heart, you know what you do? You, you stop and you reason through. You put everything down. And then you say, what am I afraid about? One there are giants in the land. Then, two, we look like grasshoppers, all right? If that's the problem we have, no fear. There's nothing to fear. Have we gone through this kind of experience before? With the children, with the people of Egypt, were we masters or were they equal? No. Those Egyptians, too, they were like giants. I about Pharaoh. I about their chariots. And then the thousands of chariots that came when were at the Red Sea. What happened to them? They perish and we're still alive. Well, those giants, God will know how to deal with them. If you will reason through what you've gone through already up till this stage, are you like 20 years of age now? You've seen trouble in this lifetime since you were born. Are you now 30 years of age? You've seen some challenges since you were born. And if you see a challenge now, instead of, fe instead of fearing the giants ahead of you, just sit down and say, well, what giants am I fearing? One, I've not even seen them. Am I sure that these spies that are telling us this, am I sure they are right? Am I sure they are not exaggerating? Even if they are not exaggerating, I write it down. Then I say, have I gone through something like this before? 
Was there somebody that said, no, they will not go, I will not release them? Was there somebody that said, no, they're going to die here? Was there somebody that even tried to uh, kind of drown the children of Israel in the, in the Red Sea, in River Nile? Yes, there was. Did we have the victory? We had the victory. Well, the God of yesterday is the God of today and the God of tomorrow. If he did it before, he'll do it again. Then there'll be no fear. And we don't have to, you know, sweat and pray and cry and weep and all that. Just reason through and you'll be delivered in Jesus' name. And then it says, would God have died in this wilderness? And wherefore has the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword? With our wives and our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return to what? And you know, sometimes you are running away from the unknown. And then you run into real, real known furnace of fire. You've forgotten what you saw in Egypt. You've forgotten what you went through in Egypt. And because of fear and because of something that is not real they were ready now to go back to pharaoh to say pharaoh we're back again we're sorry we left and when you say sorry to pharaoh and you say sorry to those egyptians uh-huh now you know you are wrong for being converted you know you are wrong for running away and forsaking idol and now you are saying you are sorry if you are really sorry you have to make a covenant you will never go again how will the promise made unto Abraham be fulfilled just because of this kind of fantasy? Fantasized exaggeration above reality. What's fear number five? Faithless expression acknowledged repeatedly. Faithless expression acknowledged repeatedly. When you, when you have an expression of unbelief, and you acknowledge that repeatedly, repeatedly. You say that and say that and say that all over again. It uh, becomes like, you know, a pathway in your, in your system. How can I explain to you? I think, uh, I think some of us here are scientifically inclined. Are you some of us? I say that some of us scientifically inclined. Okay, uh, you know, sometimes uh, as you think about our brain, we have all these uh, atoms and molecules and neuron neutrons, and then you have in the connection, you know, in our brain, there's connection between one cell and the other. And whenever you have a thought in your mind, it's like passing through a kind of path, and it's like a little string from one connection to the other. When you think about it once, you think about it again, you think about it again, it becomes very, very strong. And when any other thing that looks like what you thought about comes up again, it will just go through that same route and then spark the fear and the pain in your heart again. That's the reason why if you're going to break that circle of fear, you kind of snap that thing you wake up yourself and say no what am i thinking about what am i thinking like that what have i seen that is making me afraid and you caught that kind of path that leads to you have received the message from our pastor pastor wf kumoye the general superintendent of the parallel bible church it is my wish that as you listen you accept the old world and you will let them sink into the, your heart and by the grace of the Lord, you will never regret it. It is my prayer that by next week, when our pastor shall come up again to present another message, you will be there, your family will be there, and your friends. And I believe as you are listening to the message every week, by the grace of the Lord, you will never be the same. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, because of today's message. We thank you, O oh Lord, because of the one you let us listen to last week. And the one we are going to listen to the next week, by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, if we tarry, we shall listen together once again next week. And if not, every one of us will be there with you in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answers prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.